In this video, we're going to find the zeros of an equation. So let's use the equation f of x equals 4x cubed minus 24x squared minus x plus 6 as an example. So when we go to find the zeros, we need to first find all of the possible zeros to help us um, have a baseline of where to look. So this follows the rules plus or minus q over p. So we need to figure out what q is and what p is. So p is going to be all the factors of our leading coefficient, so the coefficient in front of the largest x value. So this is x cubed is our largest value, so our p is going to be all of the factors of 4. And our q is going to be the factors of the constant, so the value that is not with any x's. So that's 6. So the factors of 4 are 1, 2, and 4. And the factors of q are 1, 2, 3, and 6. So now we will divide all of our q's by p's and have a plus and minus to find our possible zeros. So our possible zeros will be, let's start with the 1. So we'll do plus or minus 1 over 1. And then plus or minus 1 over 2. Plus or minus 1 over 4. And then we'll move on to, so we did this q. So let's move to the next q. Plus or minus 2 over 1. Plus or minus 2 over 2. And plus or minus 2 over 4. So now I've done the 2's, so let's do the 3's. And on to the 6. Okay. So now we can simplify this because we can see that some things are going to be the same. So 1 over 1 is just plus or minus 1. So then we have plus or minus 1 half, plus or minus 1 fourth, then plus or minus 2. And then we can see that plus or minus 2 over 2 gives us 1, which is a repeat. And then we have plus or minus 2 over 4, which is, simplifies to 1 half, which is a repeat. Then we have plus or minus 3 over 1, which will be plus or minus 3. We have plus or minus 3 halves, plus or minus 3 fourths, plus or minus 6. And then we can see plus or minus 6 halves is just 3, and plus or minus 6 over 4 is plus or minus 3 halves, which is what we already have. So now that we have found all of our possible zeros, we can start trying to find out which one of these are the zeros for the equation. So looking at that there is an x to the cube in our equation, we will assume there are three zeros. So I like to use synthetic division to find the zeros. So when we do synthetic division, you draw your bracket, and then you're going to use the coefficients from your equation. So we'll start with our largest x value, so x cubed, so that will be 4 in front. And now we would go down to x squared, which we have one, which is negative 24, down to our x, which is negative 1, and then our constant, which is 6. Don't forget that if you have any values that were missing, so if we didn't have an x squared term, instead of a negative 24, we would need to put a 0 in as a placeholder. So let's start by just picking one of these zeros to try. So let's try a positive 1. So we put a positive 1 out front. So when we start our synthetic division, you always just bring the first number down. So we have a 4. Now we're going to multiply this number by our outer number. So 4 times 1 is 4, and you put this under our negative 24. So then we add down, and that gives us negative 20. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to multiply negative 20 by 1, which is negative 20, put it under our 1, and we get negative 1 plus a negative 20 is a negative 21. Now we do the same thing. 
negative 21 times 1 is negative 21, so you put it under 6, and you 6 plus negative 21, which is negative 15. So we didn't end up with a 0 as our last number. We ended up with a negative 15. So 1 is not a 0. So we can try some other numbers. So let's try a positive 6. So we'll write our same numbers like before. So you bring down the 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So negative 24 plus 24 is 0. 0 times 6 is 0. So negative 1 plus 0 is negative 1. And then negative 1 times 6 is negative 6, which gives us a 0. So this means that 6 is a, pos is a 0 for this equation. Now, instead of continuing to find more zeros, we can see that we can just make this remaining part into an equation. So we always start we forget the zero, and we start with the last number, so that's going to be our constant. Then we move over one, and this starts our x. So the zero becomes zero x, and this four is the next value up, which will be four x squared. So this will simplify to four x squared minus one, and we'll set that equal to zero and solve. So if we add 1 to both sides, we'll get 4x squared equals 1. Divide each side by 4. Get x squared equals 1 fourth. If we take the square root of both sides, we'll get x equals plus or minus 1 half. So here's our other two zeros. So our zeros for this equation were positive 1 half, negative 1 half, and 6.